Good afternoon. We are back. I'm Reverend Jeff Jones, pastor of World Victory Church and Life Center in the beautiful city of Newport News. We're uh, moving along. We're progressing in our 40 days of renewal for this Lenten season. Uh, we just finished up. Let me share this for you. We just finished up with Psalm 1, what was it? Uh, 39. So now we're picking up today with Psalm 32 verses 1 through 4. And then on Friday, tomorrow, we'll do 32, 5 through 7. And then the next day, we'll close it on out. So uh, this is a great psalm because it talks about forgiveness, a little bit different from the previous one from the day before. But I think we'll find some interesting things here. But let me give my commercial, right? So at World Victory Church and Life Center, our purpose is to help people meet God through Jesus Christ, who will meet their needs at every age and stage of life. And we believe wholeheartedly that you know, worshiping God is fundamental, right? We also believe in fellowship. We've got to get together. We've got to live in community. We've got to share this world. And so we have to fellowship together. Discipleship is so important. As you see, we're going through this verse by verse Bible study, doing it from a literary perspective, but we're going through it. So to help you understand that I don't believe that God would have inspired people to write a book that you could not understand. So that's discipleship. Then there's ministry, you know, what we're doing for other people. And quite frankly, uh, many of us are good at ministry. Whether we're doing it through the church or not, we're always helping people. And then lastly, evangelism or outreach. We've got to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, and this is one way to do it. So what we need you to do is to like, subscribe, make comments. If you've got something out of the lesson, let us know. Comment. If you're on uh, YouTube, go ahead and click that notify bell so that you're notified whenever we post content. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. You see what we've got going here. We got that covered. So let's go on and let's go through the text. So we're gonna look at Psalm 32. I'm gonna read it today from the Amplified Version. So what I do, oftentimes I will use uh, Bible Gateway, uh, Bible Gateway because I want you to know that there's a way to get more versions of the text so you can actually go through and see what's important how different writers or groups of people interpret it so today we're going to use the amplified version i'll read the whole text but we're going to cover 32 through uh verses one through four today but let's do the whole thing a psalm of david a skillful song or didactic or reflective poem that's called a mass skill blessed blessed happy fortunate to be envied is he who has forgiveness of transgression continually exercise upon him whose sin is covered. Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is the man to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silence before I confessed, my bones wasted away through my groaning all the day long. For day and night, your hand of displeasure was heavy upon me. My moisture was turned into the drought of summer. Selah is a term, means to calmly think of that, meditate, depending on your Bible, you might have Selah written out to the side or meditate. So that means calmly think of that. Now let's jump back, verse five. I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquity I did not hide. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, continually unfolding the past till all is told. Then you instantly forgave me the guilt and iniquity of my sin, Selah. Pause, folks. Calmly think of that. For this forgiveness, let everyone who is godly pray. Pray to you in a time when you may be found. Surely, when the great water, surely when the great waters of trial overflow, they shall not reach the spirit in him. You are a hiding place for me. You, Lord, preserve me from trouble. You surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance. Hear it again. Selah. Pause and calmly think of that. I, the Lord, will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Be not like the horse or the mule which lack understanding, which must have their mouths held firm with bit and bridle, or else they will not come with you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but he who trusts in, relies on, and confidently leans on the Lord shall be compassed about with mercy and with loving kindness. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice you uncompromisingly. 
righteous. You who are upright and in the right standing with him, shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Amen. So I wanted to share a different version of the text. That was the amplified version. So let's, let's break it down a little bit. So this is a, a, a familiar psalm of forgiveness, and it is called a penitential or a repentant psalm. It has certain characteristics. And if you know those characteristics, then you will be able to insert yourself in the text. You'll be able to assume some of the characters. You can really get a good feel for what this text means to you. So a penitential psalm has certain characteristics. So you know, the first time we go into a new text, I have to break it down. So let's go and see what does a penitential psalm look like? All right, let me bring this up for you. And we are going to break this down. Somebody said, let it be broken there, Jeffy. All right, let it be broken. All right, let me just go ahead and move this over a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. Okay, the structure of a penitential psalm, right, is the speaker, whoever it is, is going to confess their sin. Then they're going to express sorrow for that sin. They're going to describe the effects of that guilt. Something happened to them. They felt something. They experienced something. And then they petition God for forgiveness and or they celebrate God's forgiveness. Now, the great thing about this structure is if you've done something and you don't know necessarily how to pray for forgiveness, right? This is a model. That's what I love about the Psalms. The way they're written, you can they can be modeled by you. You can actually use these. So if I've done something, I'm going to confess to God. I'm going to confess that sin. I got to name it. I've got to say what I did. If I'm silent, and there's going to be issues. Then I've got to be sorry for it, right? I've got to express the sorrow for sin. And then, you know, if it was eating me up or if it was destroying me or breaking me down or causing some pain, I've got to describe that. Because when I'm talking to God, God may, needs to know that I understand how bad this is. And then I've got to ask for forgiveness. So I love the structure because you can duplicate it. And remember, we're taking a literary look at the scriptures for this very reason. If you know how and why something was written, then you'll understand it better. So as I, as I look at this particular Psalm, this one, right? And, and by the way, you can put your, uh, your, your device on pause and write these down, or you can let us know through your comments and we'll get them to you uh, through the church. But this one has two beatitudes, some blessings, right? For being forgiven by God. Then there's a recollection of guilt. Just like we were saying, you've got to recognize the guilt. And then there's a recollection of how the speaker's guilt was relieved by God. So there was forgiveness. So this particular psalm is following that penitential psalm flow. And then there's a piece here where the poet's going to universalize. Well, or in other words, he starts teaching other people what he just learned. And then there'll be instructions by the speaker uh, later in verses 8 through 11 that kind of regard God's goodness. So. Let's break down three and four, and we're going to be out for today. Let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. All right, so here's, here's the thing. So if you look at one and two, one and two, the way this is structured, because it's a song, so you know, with a song, you can, you can put the cause before the effect. You can put the cause after the effect. You can do whatever you want. So in this particular psalm, when you look at verses one through four, in one and two, he, the writer is describing the person who is blessed. The one who is blessed is the one who has been given forgiveness of his transgression, continually exercised upon him whose sin is covered. God covers the sin. God takes that sin and forgives him and puts it into the sea of forgetfulness. That's the one who's blessed. The blessed is the man to whom the Lord imputes no in, in, uh, iniquity, meaning he doesn't even hold it against him and in whose spirit there is no deceit. So, so the blessed one is the one who's been forgiven, right? Because they confess their sins. So when you look at three and four, this is the writer, right? We say it's David because it's convenient, right? It's David. He hands this song to the musicians. It's a masculine. It's one that educates, right? And so you can say that the singer, or you can say that David, or you can say that you are writing three and four. So in three and four, he says, when I kept silence before I confessed, my bones wasted away through my groaning all the day long. Metaphors, right? His bones are groaning. You ever felt so bad that you just, you know, everything hurts. 
not because you did something physically, but maybe you did something that you need forgiveness for, from God, not just from other people, but from God. So he said, when I kept silence, or before I confessed, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, verse four, for day and night, your hand, that's God's hand, your hand of displeasure was heavy upon me. My moisture was turned into the drought of summer. And then there's a sila, pause, pause, and calmly think of that. Now watch what happens when I take three and four and move them to the front, right? and then take one and two. Now watch, I'm gonna read that from another version. Now watch what happens. We're gonna take three and four and we're gonna move them because it's a Psalm, it's a song. People write songs, sometimes they rhyme, sometimes they have different meters, sometimes they have different things that are going on, but watch what happens. Okay, three and four is gonna go first this time from the New International Version. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. As in the heat of summer. And now if I take one and two and put it in the back. Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him and in whose spirit is no deceit. When you look at it that way, right? It's in three and four, it's, it's the writer saying, I should have confessed. I kept silent. I didn't confess my sins. Because I didn't confess my sins, my bones wasted away. Because I didn't confess my sins, uh, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day. Because I didn't confess my sin, for day and night, God's hand was heavy upon me. Because I didn't confess my sins, my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. But since I confess my sins, blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Because I confess my sins, blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him. Because I confess my sins, blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him and in whose spirit is no deceit. So you're flipping because it's a song. It's a psalm. You can rearrange it. Now that takes you to a whole different dimension. I, I was burdened. Have you ever been burdened? Burdened, saddled down with information, saddled down with some sin, that, whatever it was, that's your business. But have you ever been saddled? Have you ever felt like God's thumb was on you? Have you ever felt like you were being punished, right, for what has happened or what took place in your life? Have you ever felt that? And on the other hand, when you've asked God for forgiveness, have you ever felt that freedom? Have you ever felt that the world had been made right? Have you ever felt that now you're back in line to be blessed like you were before this sin or whatever it was? Have you ever felt that recovery? That is why the Psalm 32 is so powerful. It's because it is a Psalm of forgiveness. It is forgiveness. It is the ultimate way to ask God for forgiveness. And it plays out that you can see the results of the asking. Make sense? So what I would say to you is embrace Psalm 32, look at it, play with it, identify the characters. There's many characters. There's God, there's the writer, there's a character called you, there's a congregation or an assembly that's being spoken to. But it, as you investigate it, think, if I want forgiveness, the very first thing is I've got to confess. And don't we hear that in the New Testament, that if we are careful to confess our sins, that God is faithful and just and that he will forgive our sins, right? So this is a beginning of that, right? Psalm 32. All right, so that's Psalm 32. I hope you got something out of that. Uh, work it, you gotta work it, you gotta put in the work. But what we need from you is to go ahead and like it, like on whatever format we've posted on, whether it's in LinkedIn. I've been, I've been tweeting these out too. I've been sending them through Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, wherever you are, go ahead and hit like. Give us a comment. Go ahead and subscribe. We want to build the number of subscribers. We want to multiply exponentially the number of people who are feeling better about breaking down scripture and having it work in their lives. Okay, let's pray.
God, I want to thank you for bringing us together. God, I thank you for whoever's watching currently and whoever's watching whenever they watch. God, I pray that uh, they are able to use what you showed us and how to teach people to read the text that they may use it to their benefit, oh God, that they may get a little bit closer to you, maybe that they may feel a little bit uh, more able to navigate through your word. We give you the praise and the honor and the glory for what you've done here, God. We appreciate you. We love you. We lift you up. We magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray. And they all said amen and amen. Well, every day we talk about life is difficult. And we leave with the same benediction every day because we want you to know, even though life is difficult, these are the words that Jesus said. In this world, you shall have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. Go in peace. Have a lovely rest of the evening. Remember, God loves you so very much. And so do we. Amen and amen.